Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. And today we're going to be tackling the Batman Damned book from Brian Azzarello and Lee Bermejo. Whew. Okay, let's get things out of the way first. The big elephant in the room, if you will. Uh, boy, this episode's going to be pun-filled, so get ready. Uh, the Batawang situation. If you don't know, back in September 2018, when this book was first coming out, it was the first DC Black Label. Now you're probably wondering, what the heck is a DC Black Label? Basically, it's their mature imprint that was established last year, and it's sort of like this black sticker on your book that says, DC Black Label. It's intended for mature audiences and features storylines that are not necessarily set in continuity with the main DC universe. Instead, they're, they are allowing artists to flex their muscles and take more risks and create uh, more uh, personal stories with these characters and do something different. I love the idea. I am all up for it. However, the marketing for Batman Damned was atrocious. Uh, supposedly, the story goes that from a technical snafu, we were able to see uh, Batman's junk in the first issue. It wasn't supposed to be super highlighted, more like an outline or something like that, but it was a printing error, so it clearly showed up when you uh, got uh, your hands on the issue. And I gotta say, before the controversy, before we knew what the heck was going on, I loved the idea that it was prestige form or format, uh, sort of like this magazine-sized comic. I really wanted to own something like that because I don't, I don't collect singles, but I do want to get something like that. That's pretty, that's a pretty cool format to have because the art is going to benefit immensely from uh, the larger page uh, from the larger page sizes, especially Bermejo's art, which is unbelievably badass in this book. Uh, so uh, the issue drops, the thing, the the Batawang situation occurs, and everybody freaked the f out and comic book shops could not get a hold of more issues it sold out everywhere even online sites i do remember going to instocktrades.com and we did an episode of i don't i don't remember if i was on that day but we did an episode of uh omni bros live over at the omnibus collectors network and we were talking no, I probably wasn't there. We were talking about uh, the situation, and then one of the guys mentioned, hey, In Stock Trades has the book. So everybody jumped in, and, and the page, you know, they had to refund people because they were not expecting such a high volume, traffic volume of, of online goers. Uh, I couldn't get my issue. I was refunded, and eventually I just gave up. And I got to be completely sincere when I say this, Thank goodness that I gave up on this and did not uh, collect any of the issues because I think this is the one of the first modern Batman books which I did not like whatsoever. It's only three issues, three, I want to say, I don't know if they're, I cannot remember at the top of my head, but I do think they the page count is a little bit higher from a typical comic, but still, it's only three issues, it's a very small story. But the way this thing was advertised, it was going to be something different. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty basic, kind of uneven, boring, and kind of just meh issue or story of Batman. This is a sort of loose sequel to uh, the creative team's Joker story that they did. I think it was around 2008. So what happens in this book is very simple. Basically, Batman gets into a scuffle with Joker and uh, Batman gets knocked out. And when he wakes, he finds out that Joker has died. And there's this huge mystery of is he really alive or not? What soon follows is a shockingly uh, gritty comic that is trying to be super edgy, but just failed in my honest opinion. First off, I love Brian's writing, do not get me wrong, but for some reason, I don't know what the heck was going on, 
but I could not understand half the things I was reading. And I thought, wait, did I suddenly hit my head and forgot how to read? The narrative structure of the monologues or whatever it is you're reading don't really make a ton of sense when you're reading it. Uh, so I'm like, what's going on? Of course, it turns out that you are um, you're having uh, an unreliable narrator in the form of John Constantine talking to the reader about life and the nature of Gotham and Batman and things like empathy and, and, and fear and it has a ton of corny dialogue that I will highlight for you guys that I was like uh, okay they did that sure why not uh, but eventually you know the two of them team up to solve this mystery of whether or not the Joker is really dead or what is happening and then it goes off into this weird reimagining of Batman's origin slightly tweaked to something that I personally did not like whatsoever and I thought it was a little bit rude and obnoxious that <laughs> that Brian would try to add a detail to the Wayne's history that was never really there and nobody really toyed around with that and and I felt a little bit like ugh, mm, really then we get introductions to the more um mystical uh, magical side i should say to gotham and, and i do love the idea of this book being more like horror based in gotham like very psychological horror with uh characters like uh, uh dead man zatanna enchantress uh you know all the staples of the magical side of dc comics they are involved in this book in some shape or form so this leads me to believe that you know, aside from the comic selling because of a controversy, I just didn't like it. And I think you should have rebranded the book as, like, just as like Dark, Gotham City, uh, Black Label, or something like that, you know? Uh, I, I, the art is breathtaking. It is some of Vermejo's best work. It is gorgeous to look at. I, I read the issues digitally. So if you can, uh, if you can't get your hands on the hardcover or the singles, and you only have like a tablet, I have an iPad that I use to read comics uh, on occasions, it looks friggin' fantastic <laughs> digitally. It really uh, blew me away how uh, awesome the art looked. Every expression, uh, the, the, greeting, the grittiness and the textures of Gotham, the suits, the costumes, I should say, they all look very realistic, dark and grimy, and just uh, very nasty looking in a good way, you know? Uh, but the story, mm, you know, part of what I did not like about the story is how uh, some of the dialogue can be R-rated and you can make it a little bit compelling but in the case of this book I found it a little bit more uh, juvenile in some occasions there are some reworkings for some characters with which I, I absolutely hated uh, I won't say who but you can probably guess if you looked at the uh, images for this book there is uh, there's even an attempted rape scene that just came out of nowhere in this book there is um, there's a lot of violence and grit to the book where I think it just comes out of nowhere and I get it you're trying to do a mature Batman storyline but I think you could do better than this I think you could create a world that's a little bit more fascinating and it doesn't have to resort to these sorts of things to tell a compelling story because the character lends itself to a very good R-rated detective story you know and yeah you want to do the whole supernatural thing but just because it's a supernatural tale does not mean that it has to be uh sort of foul you know uh yeah there is sort of like a scary aspect to it and and i thought it was brilliant to mix the horror elements of uh magic with a city like gotham but uh, the way it's done in this book, eh, it's a bit of a hit or miss in my uh, honest opinion. I, I wanted more from that story. It's only three issues, and before you know it, you blaze through it, 
and the end resolution of the story without giving anything away left much to, de to be desired because it doesn't, or at least to me, it doesn't reach a definitive conclusion. Yeah, you do know what happens at the end, but it's more like a, like a little asterisk in Batman's life of a R-rated chapter that happened between a story and another story. Like, it's not life-altering. It doesn't do much, uh, in my opinion, going forward. I didn't leave reading this thinking, wow, this changed my outlook on things. No, it was basically like an R-rated rump through... Uh, Gotham City with magical characters and a dazed and confused Batman, which was a little bit weird. I did like the suit. I love what Bermejo does with the bat suits. His interpretations of it look pretty badass in my, uh, for my taste, I should say. So yeah, confused, uh, shocked, and just I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like it. I gotta be completely sincere. I, it's not a story that I would recommend. I don't know if you guys, uh, you probably disagree with me. You probably think it's it's fantastic, and that is perfectly fine. Everybody has different tastes. I just didn't like it as much as other people. I'm pretty sure the hardcover looks amazing with that beautiful uh, artwork, but it's not something that I would uh, go out and get as soon as humanly possible. Just saying. Have you read Batman Damned? Let me know down below. If not, tell me what are some of your favorite magical stories in the DC Universe as well. Guys, as always, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to A Week in Geekdom. Following me on your favorite social media platform as well. Thank you so much. We are very close to 2,000 subscribers, and that is pretty damn awesome. I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode. Thank you.